Hey guys, it's Will from LearnWriter, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the 2009 AP Micro FRQ question number three. This is related to game theory and subsidies. It's pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and get started. The question states that there are two competing retail firms, Red Shop and Blue Mart, and they are studying potential locations for new stores in the suburbs of a major city. Each firm must choose between a location north of the city and a location south of the city. The payment matrix is shown below, with the first entry in each cell indicating Red Shop's daily profit and the second entry indicating Blue Mart's daily profit. Both firms know all the information in the payoff matrix. So whenever you're faced with a game theory question, it's really a good idea to solve the game before you even start answering the question, because it kind of helps you understand how the game is working. So let's first think about how to solve this game. How I always saw games is by imagining that the other player is going to definitely do an action and seeing what action I'm going to do as a result of that. So let's go ahead and do that for the red shop. In this case, let's imagine that the blue shop is definitely going to play north. So I have two options as the red shop. I can play north and get a payoff of 900, or I can play south and get a payoff of 5,000. I'm definitely going to do the 5,000 because it's greater than 900. Now let's look at what happens if we think for certain that Blue Mart's going to definitely play south. In this case, I'm comparing 3,000 with 1,500, and I know that I'm definitely going to choose 3,000. Now let's think about it from Blue Mart's perspective. What happens if Red Shop is definitely going to choose north? Well, in this case, I'm comparing 1,800 with 3,500, so I'm going to definitely choose 3,500. And then finally, if Red Shop definitely plays south, as Blue Mart, my best response is going to be to play 4,000 because, or north, because it gives me a payoff of 4,000 versus 1,000. So that's a really quick way to solve a game, and it's really helpful um, because it just gives you a general idea of what are the Nash equilibriums. And if you're given that question, then you definitely already have the answer to those. So let's go ahead and answer part A. So part A is asking if Red Shop chooses a location south of the city, which location is better for Blue Mart? Explain. Well, we already did this part, and it's going to be north. And the reason why it's north is because, so I'm going to write down north, and we know that it's north because 4,000, 4K, is greater than 1K. So that's the answer to part A. Now let's think about part B. Is choosing a location to the south of the city a dominant strategy for Red Shop? So in other words, what this question is asking you is, is Red Shop always choosing south of the city the best option regardless of what Blue Mart plays? Well, as we proved when we solved this game, that is not the case. Because if Blue Mart plays south, then we know that the best response of Red Shop is to play north. So no. And we know that red depends on blue. And again, that's because, as we saw here, if blue plays south, then red should play north because 3,000 is greater than 1,500. Now let's look at part C. If the two firms cooperate in choosing locations, where will each firm locate? Well, in this case, we want to look at what the collusive outcome is. So in this case, we want to look at where the highest payoffs are. We know that there are two Nash equilibriums with Blue Mart playing, south, or playing north and Red Shop playing south or vice versa. And so what we need to compare are the two payoffs. So in this case, we know that this is going to be the outcome we're looking for. And that's because 5,000 is greater than 3,000, and 4,000 is greater than 3,500. And therefore, we want to have blue play north. So we want blue to go north. And then we want red to go south. And that gives us the highest payoff out of the game. Now let's think about part D. Part D is asking us about what happens in the case where 
The South suburb has enacted an incentive package to attract new business. Any firm that locates south of the city will receive a subsidy of $2,000. So what we need to think about is that subsidy is essentially an additional $2,000 of a payoff. And therefore, let's go ahead and redraw this table. So everything will be the same. This is going to be red. This is going to be blue. I'm going to have the north and then the south, north and then south. And we just need to think about this for a little bit. In the case where both go north, that's not going to lead to any change because there's no subsidy as a result of that. So that's going to be 900 and 1800 still. But what happens in the case where we have blue going south but red going north? Well, in this case, red is not going to get any benefit. They're still going to be at 3K. But south is going to be given an additional 2K. So what is 3,500 plus 2,000? It's 5,500. So 5.5K. And then now let's think about if red goes south and blue stays north. In this case, 7,000 for, for red as a result of moving south. And then we also know that blue is going to have the same 4K because they've stayed in the north. Now let's think about that last bottom right-hand corner. In this case, both of them have moved, and therefore we can add 2,000 to both of, their, both of their payoffs. It's a little bit tight here, but if you have any problems in understanding this, this part of the question, just go back. I walk through it verbally. Um, I understand it's a little bit tightly drawn here. What this reads is 900, 1800. This is 3000, 5500. This is 7000, uh, 4000. And then this is 3500 and 3000. So that pretty much covers it for this question. It's pretty straightforward. It's just walking you through some game theory as well as some subsidies. Um, you'll see this question every now and then. It happens every three or four years on the AP exam. But it's definitely really easy to tackle. It's not too difficult as long as you understand the core principle of how to solve for games. That covers it for this time. As always, if you have any additional questions, feel free to check out LearnRainer for hundreds of practice questions. And that's it for now. I will see you guys next time.